Right, so we're going to do a little video on our Rover 75 Maroon 2001 and uh, you may have seen the video we did on the back brakes and that all started because of a seized um, Palapa. Well, what we've gone on to do is we want to do the front brakes as well so the car have a whole new set of brakes and they probably need doing because they've been on there a fair time. So I've split the videos up and I thought in this video we'd just cover the um, front Brake, so we're going to be removing the calipers on both sides, refurbishing, changing the seals, doing all the paint and all the normal sort of stuff we uh, like to do. And we're just going to take you through the uh, process. What we do, um, as we normally do, is only follow one side. So we're going to follow the passenger side, but we do we'll be doing both sides on the uh, front. So the first thing to do is to get the wheel off. Right, so that's the wheel off. Uh, quite a bit of rust on the. Um, discs so we're gonna um, first remove the hub nut that's something we want to uh, do and of course we've got to um, remove that little um, star sort of screw bolt there as well and we do that while the brakes are still connected so you can put your foot on the brake and grip the wheel to uh, to do it otherwise it's quite a difficult or a problem to do Right, so we've got the uh, hub nut removed now and uh, also we've loosened that. The hub nut was really, really tight on the, these ones. Um, looking at them, they are quite um, wall as well. There's quite a, a lip there and as you see the pads are quite thin so they definitely needed um, changing. So um, we're going to carry on with the job and continue filming it. Right, so we're going to remove the caliper first we're going to remove that little um, sprung piece of metal and we've actually got new ones of those so the next thing we're going to do then is clamp off the um, brake pipe of course the brakes will still need the uh, air bleeding out of them it just stops all the fluid leaking out and making a mess and there uh, being a waste as well then we'll be removing the sliding bolt so we can get the uh, caliper off and then hopefully we'll bring the uh, camera around with a little back view of uh, how things are looking around there as well. So that's the brake pipe clamped off. Right, so what we've done, as you can see where the brake pipe goes into the caliper, we've just slackened that off before we remove the caliper because uh, it's fixed in place to uh, make it easier so that's a bit tight. And we've also took off the little um, sort of blanking plates off of the back of the rubbers where the sliding bolts go. Right, so now we're uh, removing the sliding pins. It's a little Allen key uh, slot in there. Once we've removed them two, top and uh, bottom, then uh, we should be able to remove the caliper away. Too much because I've got these long reach things. That's how I struggled with the first time I did these, but I didn't have this. Right, so what we're um, going to do is just slightly le loosen the bleed nipple, um, remembering that we've got the um, actual um, brake pipe clamped. Um, what that's going to do is just release the pressure in the actual caliper and that will hopefully make it easier to get the caliper off because of the grooves on the disc. Um, those pads are going to sort of get stuck on them, so by releasing some of the um, pressure in the caliper uh, that should help us to get it off but that is as we said with the brake pipe uh, clamped obviously it wouldn't really work as, as well and you'd probably lose all your fluid as well What we're doing there is just trying to lever the um, pads back a little bit, pushing the piston in so that we can, as we said, get it over that um, yeah. groove that's all that lip that's in the um, brake disc. Yeah, so we we're just saying there that you should be careful where you lever because it'd be very easy to um, distort the disc or damage the disc or the pad. It doesn't matter so much for us because we're changing the pads uh, and the disc, although we still try and be careful to avoid uh, any damage. Oh, 
and that's the uh, caliper away. And they are quite big caliper as well. So what we're doing now is now winding out the um, brake pipes. You've got to turn the whole uh, caliper to do that. And that's the uh, caliper away. Right, so we've now removed the um, shoes. Of course, one in the um, caliper. And if I just show you there, it's got like that um, special clip in it that clips in the caliper, and the other one was uh, up left on the carrier. We've moved that way. The only difference between this side and the other side is the little wire that um, goes to one of those shoes and basically tells you if they've got really, really low. And when we come to refitting it, uh, I might show you that. Um, but that's the only difference between that is unplugging that. Right, so now we're going to remove the um, bolts holding the carrier on, as you can see, they're uh, just in there. Right, so it's now just a case of winding those two bolts out to remove the caliper, so we're going to get on with that. Right, put the bolt out. Right, and that's the uh, caliper away, and the uh, disc is more or less just balanced in there, that's why I was holding it so it didn't um, fall away. And that's now revealed uh, the hub and, uh, of course, the back plate. Right, so now we want to remove the um, back shield like we did on the um, back and uh, paint it up, make sure it can't rust anymore. Now, because the um, drive shaft, without getting too involved, goes right through the um, bearing, um, it's a lot more difficult to remove and we don't really want to disturb it uh, like we did the back removing the um, hub it's a little bit more involved what we're going to do is do a modification like we did on the uh, 45s and you can check that video out is that this shield goes all the way around so technically it can't come off without all the um, hub being removed um, which in the future is a problem because if you ever need to change it or it rusts away you've then got to remove it all just for the shield so what we do is basically we um, cut this little bit out and that allows you to move it off over the hub we can then paint it put it back on and in the future you can then remove it a lot easier and basically it's three little bolts like that one there that holds it there's another one just round there and uh, one there you can see there so um, we're going to give that uh, a go first because we prefer to do it like that so uh, all we do is loosen those bolts off hope they're not too rusted in and uh, then we'll slide it round check it can move and then cut that section uh, out Right, so two of the bolts come out quite easily, this top one um, didn't, but what we had to do in the end was cut a little slot in it, because it was just so rusty, the um, spanner or socket wouldn't fit on it, and we also used a little bit of heat, and uh, that and some penetrating uh, fluid has got that uh, bolt out, we were planning to replace these anyway, because it's always risky putting them back, because they're even more unlikely to not come off. Um, next time so uh, yeah I just thought I'd cover that what we do now is check that this um, back plate can sort of move around and isn't too rusted on which looks like it's going to move around and then we can look at um, cutting that slot out right, to uh, yeah. get it off that, right so we've now got it um, loose as you can see that will then allow us to um, cut that section out and uh, slide it over because as it slips down you've then got a a thinner hole technically for it to go over right so as you can see what we've done now is cut that little bit out and that will now just allow us to uh, pull it off and uh, yeah there it is away and off and now we can um, get it all painted and cleaned up without having to take all the um, bearing and hub away and in the future if we need to remove it again that modification is uh, yeah. done as it worked successfully for us on the 45s and um, hopefully it'll be the same with uh, this 
Right, so we've now started the clean up process. I uh, initially wire brushed all this area. We put some uh, rust killer on, um, the Vactam rust killer, just to kill off any rust to provide us with a kind of an undercoat for the uh, metal paint that we use. Uh, what we've done as well, so that doesn't get any paint on or damage, we've moved the little ABS sensor. Uh, that's there, and that just slots in that hole uh, there and uh, there's a little um, screw bolt that uh, holds it in and then there'll be little teeth in there so we've removed that out the way so it doesn't get any paint on it um, and uh, also of course we'll be cleaning up all the uh, rest of the components that we're going to be um, reusing and uh, we'll take you through that as well Right, so we're now in the process of cleaning everything up and as always we like to wire brush all the rust and the dirt off, we've got it all um, together here so it don't get lost and we're slowly doing it, at the moment we're doing the um, back shield and we're slowly work our way through it Right, so before we clean the um, canapas up again, I'm just going to be showing you us doing one, although we're doing both, is we um, want to get out the old piston because our kit is the seal kit and the new piston because often that's what goes rusty and uh, can get stuck. So we always prefer to change the piston as well as the seals. What we normally try and do if they're not too jammed in, which hopefully this isn't, because we're not changing them because they're seeds, but changing them because we want to get them done before that happens. And um, the chance are they're quite worn. And as you know, the back one did seize, so the likelihood these are going to seize later on is uh, likely. So we're doing it all in one go. Um, what we're going to do is... Um, try blowing it out first which hopefully will work what we've done is put the two shoes there so it doesn't shoot out too far did you get it yeah yeah so hopefully you see there that has um got that piston right out and as we said because it's not seized that's probably why it's um come out nice and easy and there are other videos we've done where it has been seized and we've shown you how we've uh, got it out We'll just do a little bit more now, and uh, that's it right out. So yeah, and another reason for doing this is because the car is, well, over 20 years old now. We've only owned it um, a year or so, so um, we don't know the history of it either. So this just makes sure it's uh, as good as it can be um, long term for us. So uh, there's the cylinder that's um, or the piston that's come out and actually they're quite big these um wheel calipers on the uh, 75 at the front so as you can see it's um not as bad as some we've uh, done but um it certainly still is worth changing we certainly wouldn't want to put that one back uh all you've got to do is remove the old outer rubber because that comes with the um kit as well and we will also remove the um, inner seal as well that's like what we're coming up look at that it goes around the outside right so that's the seal out hopefully as you can see it's on quite tight tighter than we expected and um it goes on slightly different to the 45s because it seems to really seal around this uh, outer edge and uh, hopefully you can just about see inside there as uh, always we'll be cleaning that uh, out and using our little honing tool uh, what we've got to do next is get out the old uh, inner seal hopefully you can just about see that there the little black um rim all the way around that's that uh, inner seal there you see that now ah uh, yeah hopefully you can see there there's the seal we're just beginning to uh, prise it out and that's how we get it out And there, uh, there it is. I get a job to really um, tell whether it's warm, but um, the new seal will certainly be better than uh, than that.
Right, so that's them uh, all out, and hopefully the um, seals going back will be easier than uh, getting them out, because that one was certainly stuck on there, um, tough that uh, outer seal. Uh, what we've got to do now is remove these two little rubber uh, guides for the slider pins. Right, so now we're ready to clean. Just to let you know, we did leave in the um, bleed nipple when we were using the um, air from our air gun to blow that um, piston out. If I just show you the um, trigger that we used, it's got like a rubber end on it, one of those type from our air compressor, and that's so it would go in there and make a kind of a seal so that the piston was pushed out without the air blowing back out. Now we've took out the little bleed nipple, we always take that out of this stage just in case it is seized in and there's um, problems with that. We don't want to be cleaning it all up and fitting the seal kit and then find that's a problem, but in this case it isn't. Now that's what we use, there's a little bit of brake cleaner uh, just to get any contamination and grease off and then we'll wire brush it like we've done with all the uh, other bits. Right, so why that um, caliper continues to get cleaned up under all the other stuff, I'm going to get on with uh, painting the new brake discs. So uh, basically you give them a wipe over with some uh, degreaser uh, and then paint them with the brake paint um, red and um, then they will be ready. I've got them both up different sides just to give you uh, a look at them. They're nicely vented. Uh, this and uh, yeah, they were quite a big disc with that uh, caliper. Right, so now we've got it a bit more cleaned up. What we're going to do is um, hone out the um, inside of the caliper technically the way these work it's the piston that actually moves up and down on the seal we still like this to be um, cleaned out and uh, the best it can be And hopefully you can see now from before we clean that's looking a lot better in there and that piston does come pretty close to those walls so they do need to be um, nice and uh, clean. So um, that is uh, now more or less at the stage what we normally do is put a rush treatment on that then we'll put the seal kit in and then go on to paint it with the uh, caliper paints. So we'll show you all of that uh, next. Right, so that's the first coat done on this side of the disc. You've got to turn them over, do the first coat on the other side. But while that's drying, what I'm going to do is get on with putting the um, rust killer or the uh, vac tan that we use. As I say it could be any brand, but we find the sort of um, white milky rust stuff or rust killer always works a lot better and we found it works well on any sort of really rusty surface after you've wire brushed it and cleaned it put it on there and then we find that the um, caliper paint or heat paint takes much better to the uh, caliper when we've done that so that's what i'm going to get on with now so this stuff's nice and easy to put on uh, it goes on like a sort of a white cream, but it'll dry completely black and uh, finish off or kill any of that uh, extra rust which will stop it coming through the paint and uh, hopefully protect them. So I'm going to get on with that and do that on both the uh, calipers and uh, then leave them overnight along with the uh, first coat of the red caliper paint on those discs. Right, so now we've got all those bits cleaned up under a wire brush. What we're doing is uh, painting the back shields and the uh, carrier with um, the metal paint that acts as like an undercoat. And we find, as we said, like the rust killer, that the um, heat proof paint certainly goes on a lot better when you treat with some kind of uh, 
rust killer or um, rust paint or this one this hammerite paint here we're using just to uh, give them a coat and stop that rust from coming back through quite so quick and we think it's definitely important to protect these um, shields because we know especially on the 45s they go rusty very quick and they're not that easy to get and when you do get them they're pretty expensive so being these are in fairly good condition we certainly want to protect them uh, as long as we can. And then as I think we showed you before, what we uh, do is once they're dry, they then go in their own boxes. We've got one box for the right side and one box for the uh, left side. Right, so we've got all our um, back plates and carriers painted in the um, hammerite rust um, paint. And uh, of course we've got all our um, nuts and uh, bolts clean for each side in our trays. Uh, and the calipers are now um, dry from the uh, vac tan rust stuff that we've uh, put on them. And uh, we've got our seal kit ready from uh, Big Red. They're the ones we normally um, use when we get the uh, seal kits online. They seem to be of uh, good quality and uh, come quick and reliably. We've got the um, two pistons there as well so it's all there in the kit so what we're going to do is fit one of them and um, basically we won't film both we'll just film the uh, one like we're doing with all the others but we'll be doing the both of them right so um, we've got all the stuff laid out for the kit we've got the uh, outer boot and dust protector the inner seal uh, you get the two of the um, slider pin rubber protectors and even the cap so got everything we need the silicon grease comes we're starting to get a build up of that as well we've done other breaks which is always useful because you always need other bits uh, in extra areas so we're just going to take you through the uh, process now right so the first thing we're going to do is fit the uh, inner seal and the reason we haven't painted the calipers yet is because we find if you paint them and then try and put the seal kits in uh, you tend to end up chipping or damaging the paint the only thing is you do have to mask up uh, any of the seals and plastic areas but we find that works best and we're hoping that this seal goes in better than the calipers on the 45s because it seems to fit slightly different going around the outside so we're hoping that's going to go in a little bit easier uh, of course putting the silicon grease on the um, seal first of all normally these go in fairly um, easily right, so that's the ceiling hopefully you can uh, see it just just there Right, I'm not going to grease this piston because I'm angry. Right, so there's the new um, piston there. And as you can see, some kits actually come with just the rubber seal kit. But we think that it is well worth paying the extra and getting the um, piston in with the kit. Because you can see just how nice it is. And there is no corrosion and no risk of that seizing, certainly in the nearer future. We don't put any silicon grease on it at the moment because it's easier to get the seal on with... Um, out the silicon grease. And what we're hoping is this goes on easier because unlike the 45 calipers we've done, the sill actually goes round the outside of the caliper rather than sitting in a secondary lip on the inside. And we have silicon all in there. Now we're going to put some silicon on. So that's the piston on. And we're just getting the seal all the way round from the underneath right round to the uh, top there <laughs> so 
So just spend a bit of time, yeah. make sure it's definitely on, and uh, that is it that done. So uh, yeah, certainly a lot nice easier. Ones, yeah, certainly a lot easier than the um, 45 one. So that's much better having it go on the outside. And what we normally also do a little bit later on is we put some silicon in there to seal it because you'll notice the old ones were very rusty in there and although that has technically enough to do with it we don't want really any corrosion uh, setting in right so that's uh, both calipers done now and um, they're all ready now to be painted along with the uh, shields and um, also the um, carrier as well on both sides so that's what we're going to get on with uh, now yeah as we say certainly a lot better than the uh, 45 calipers um going on the outside certainly makes it a lot uh, more straightforward and less fiddly um a job to do and uh, yeah looking um, a lot better and uh, hopefully uh, lasting a long time doing here is now just painting up the bits of the suspension that we put the rust killer on uh, they were painted probably about a year ago or so so really it's a uh, touching up and making things look neat but also getting to some of the bits we couldn't get around here where the shield was uh, so that's what we're doing we're going to paint the wheel nuts so they look uh, a little bit better uh, ideal time to do it uh, what's quite nice we noticed is on this um casting here that are hopefully focus there's actually a little rover badge or sort of a, an outline of a rover badge in the uh, in the casting Right, so we've got everything prepared under the um, wheels at the front and uh, we come across to uh, here. I've got everything laid out as we like to uh, lay the stuff out before we uh, start. And I thought it was quite nice to uh, show you it laid out as, uh, as well. Uh, of course, we're changing the discs and we've um, painted them, as you've seen. We refurbish the calipers and uh, we've also painted up the uh, brake um, shields or sort of dust covers the calipers as well we've painted up all the wheel nuts we've got all the um, bolts and the sliders and uh, even the bleed nipples in the um, relevant pots so uh, we've cleaned all of that up um, what we've also done is got the new wire for the sort of sensor that senses the brakes really wear down because it's not so you always change, but on this car, we don't know how long it's been there, and they look pretty old, and they're very vulnerable to sort of breaking and cracking. So, being they weren't too expensive, we've changed them. And, of course, uh, one of the last things from the seal kit is the little rubber bits that go there where the sliders go. We've got them, and, of course, we've got a new set of uh, shoes. I just thought I'd show you them uh, all laid out. Uh, there before we uh, fit them and just make sure that we check we've got everything ready and I haven't missed anything out. Right, so we're ready to start fitting everything back. Uh, you may notice that the drop link's been changed and uh, hopefully there'll be a video coming covering uh, that being changed. But uh, getting back on with the brakes, what we're going to do next is fit the caliper. We found that easier without all the back shield and everything in the way because you need to... Uh, twist it round as you thread it back onto the uh, brake pipes so that's what we're going to be putting on next but before we do that we've got to put the um, little rubber bits that go into that caliper that the uh, slide pins go through oh, so we're just putting the little rubber guides back we're putting a little bit of silicone grease that all comes with the original silk you get these two um, little rubber guides and uh, of course the silicon grease we're just using what's left actually often there's more than enough so um, we've got to build up for doing some of the extra bits that we want to do
it's just a case of uh, putting these silicone in and then pushing them down it's a little bit fiddly once they go down they normally go down and they're in so we're going to get on with that now and that's them in now so what we're doing now is getting the um, brake pipe back into the caliper again another bit of a fiddly job but we have found it certainly a lot easier if you haven't got all the um uh, back brake plates or um the guard on which uh, normally it would probably still be there but being we've got all that off it certainly makes it a little bit easier for us Right, so that's the caliper with the brake pipe nice and tight and, and we've then got all the bits that we've cleaned up in there. There is an old hub nut and we'll be changing it for that one there. So um, we've got all them ready to uh, fit as well. So we're just putting the uh, bleed nipple in and again we took that out straight away to make sure it wasn't seized in before we refurbished the caliper. We've also checked there's uh, no blockages in it as well. Right, so now we're going to put on the um, back plate, the shield, and of course that's held in with three little kind of bolts. And what we've done is because the others were quite rusty, um, we're changing them for a little bolt of an Allen key heading and hopefully that'll make it easier next time we come to uh, remove it. And I think even if you get the bolts out okay, it's well worth changing them because the um, heads often do. Uh, rust away on those will get weak so when you next come to do it they uh, may fail we had one that had more or less failed we did manage to get it out it was difficult so um, well worth changing in our case we needed to because they were beginning to rust of course we've got a little modification we've cut the slot out and uh, that way that lets them go on uh, a little bit um, easier well it lets us get them on and off because you couldn't get them on and off without that uh, slot in fact Right, so we're just going to put those three little bolts in top, um, right round the middle and uh, the bottom. So we'll get on with that and then that uh, shield will be nice and uh, fitted. Right, so that's the back shield on. Now we're ready to uh, put the disc on. Of course, we've got that uh, alignment screw to put in with that. And we've got the carrier all ready as uh, well. And of course, we've got the um, caliper just uh, hooked up out the way while we're uh, doing that. Right, so before we're putting the disc on, what we're going to um, do is just put that hub nut back. Um, it's not something that um, you might necessarily have done on a job like this, but we did it. And what we wanted to do was put new hub nuts in. We found when you get new hub nuts, um, probably they're aftermarket ones, they have a bigger outer diameter although the thread's the same um, and what we've done there you can see the new hub nut on there and the um, old one to the side so our sockets are quite fat sockets so what you find is if we show you there it won't fit into that um, diameter so what we had to do was get a new thinner socket um, so that would fit into that uh, inner ring there and um, allow us to do the hub nut up. What we've done is we've just done it up and then we'll talk it up to the correct torque settings uh, a little bit later on. But I just thought I'd show you that because it might be something you're not aware of if you buy a set of hub nuts. You'll find that a normal um, sort of socket may not necessarily fit on. You need quite a thin one to uh, get it into that inner ring and over the uh, hub nut. Uh, as always, with the torque settings, we're using the ones that... Um, Ah, they are, yes, yeah, so you can see the sockets there and how much thicker a uh, sort of normal one would normally be to the thin one we've got. Yes, yeah, so all the torque settings, as always, we're using from the Haynes manual and the X part disc, and there, if anything we're doing up, we'll be following those um, specifications. Right, so now it's time to put the disc on. So the disc has got that little alignment screw and we're just going to put that in now. Right, 
Right, so we're going to put the ABS sensor back. Again, we removed it for painting. Um, probably should have done it before we put the shield back, but uh, lucky enough the caliper's not back, so we'll put it back. And hopefully you can uh, see if I'll just bring this round here. Ah, yeah, there. There's that hole and the little freddy bit for the screw to go in. So it just goes in there behind the um, uh, brake disc shield. And that's the ABS sensor going back there. Right, so what we've done is just put back the little ABS wire below and put the little um, clip in that holds the uh, brake pipe in there. So that's uh, all those little bits back now at this stage when it's easier to uh, get to them. And that's that uh, clip back nicely there. You see that? Yes, yeah. Right, so we're, as you can see, putting the uh, carrier back and you can see how it uh, goes in there, hopefully. And it's these uh, two bolts, top and bottom, that uh, hold it in. Right, so that's the um, caliper carrier back in. I hope you can see this. And now it's um, time to get the caliper back and, of course, the new brake shoes in as well. Right, so they're the new um, pads ready to go back on. Um, of course, the only difference is one is completely plain and the uh, other one has got the uh, hooks that you can see there that push into the back of the piston on the caliper. Right, so we've put a little bit of silicon grease just in the uh, piston. We're also putting a little bit um, on those uh, hooks of that pad that goes on the piston side. Um, one of the things is it will hopefully stop the piston rusting up inside. And it'll hopefully make that go in a little bit easier and also come out as well if it's uh, less rusty. So just putting a little bit of um, silicone grease again that comes in with the kit just on the little ends there and there. And uh, we've done the same with the uh, shoe that's uh, ready to go in. Right, so that's the caliper in with uh, both the shoes. Now what we need to do is put the uh, sliding pins back in. That's probably enough for what I've got there. Right, so again we've uh, cleaned those sliding pins all up because it is important they move nice and freely. And then we're putting the uh, silicon grease on them. Then they slide through those uh, rubber bits that we put on earlier. And the last thing to do now those sliding pins are uh, done up is to just put the little black plastic uh, caps, as you can see it's going in there, onto the back of those um, rubber boots, which is uh, quite nice. You have the kit come with those because uh, they're the sort of thing that get lost or break up on the originals. Uh, 
and that's the uh, little clip once again we've uh, got new ones those you don't always get them being we were changing everything and again they weren't actually that expensive to get in the whole scheme of things we've put the new uh, springs on right and in the uh, daylight we've now got the uh driver's side finished as well the only difference with the driver's side uh, similar to the backs is that they have the little um, wear down sensor uh, we changed that with a new piece of wire and that goes in there and you can see it um, goes through into that clip uh, and then up under the wheel arch through those two little grommets and if I bring you up onto the uh, engine side down by that mail it's probably not very easy to see the plug is actually uh, down there so that's the only difference between the driver side and uh, the passenger side really so back on the passenger side that really is the uh, job more or less done uh, maybe a little bit of touching up with uh, any little bits of paint that got marked while we were fitting it uh, of course we've got the um, hub nut to talk up and then stake there um, and of course we've got to uh, bleed the brakes but I think we've finished the job here as the main amount is done and there is another video we've done about bleeding the brakes on a 75 and um, also I think even um, we've done talking up and uh, staking a hub nut as well so I think we're finished the video at this stage as uh, always they're not a full how-to video but more of a guide to let you see what's involved in the job and maybe for thinking of taking it on the visual reference along with your own experience and the uh, manuals i think is always worth doing we certainly always like to watch them hopefully you like to watch these as always thank you very much for watching don't forget to um, look at some of the other videos we do of course don't forget we did the back brakes on this car as well so that video will be available and also there'll be a video on the drop links uh, being installed they'll be all on the uh, channel as well don't forget to check the instagram and the twitter page and all those links are on our homepage.